Well, Queen Elizabeth II is currently lying in state in St. Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh, Scotland for public viewing. Her coffin will remain there until tomorrow when it will travel to London. The Queen will then lie in state at Westminster Hall from Wednesday until the day of her funeral, which is set for Monday, September 19th. And as you can see, Lana Zak is joining me now um, from London. So, you know, Lana, this is obviously a time of immense change. Um, most people from the UK have only ever known one queen, Queen Elizabeth. Um, I'm wondering now that sort of the shock of her passing has worn off. What is the public mood? What's the atmosphere like in London now? You know, it's interesting that you bring that up, Anne-Marie, because even just in the couple of days that we've been here, we have seen a change in mood. Today, there was a, a beautiful changing of the guard ceremony here in Buckingham Palace, and one official told me that uh, it was particularly celebratory as a way to... Um, to celebrate the new king. He had just been to Parliament and addressed the House of Commons with his very first speech in front of that body. And there has been a movement. It's, it's not so much grief. It is one of appreciation mm. for the Queen. And we certainly heard that mirrored in that statement from her grandson, uh, Prince Harry, where he was talking about her as a guiding compass and remembering his personal uh, experiences with his grandmother, but also the role that she played here for or the people that were her subjects, but also people who just looked up to, to the late queen. Um, you know, speaking of the new king now, King Charles III, he's definitely, as we've seen him publicly here and there, you can see that he's trying to maintain his composure. And what I sort of get from mm -hmm. um, when he interacts with the public is there's a genuine desire for him to feel supported. You know, we saw people saying, you know, long live the king and, and, and really sort of uplifting words. He spoke to parliament today. What did he say? Did he get the level of support? Did it seem that, um, you know, he would need? It certainly seemed that way. And reviews both from uh, the press and from government officials, but also just from people I've been speaking with on the street, have been very positive for King Charles. They have been impressed by his ability to, uh, to really show that the primary focus of his reign is going to be on that continuation of his mother's legacy, of what they have come to expect. Because as you say, everyone here, for the most part, only know Queen Elizabeth on the throne. They are not accustomed to anyone else. She has been such a guiding force for seven decades. And what he has said has been everything to reassure the public, to reassure his subjects that, that he intends to follow in her footsteps, that she was a, a, a guide to him. And these are some pretty big wellies that he's going to be stepping mm -hmm. into, obviously, Henry. Yeah, definitely. Um, he's going to be heading to Scotland a little later on. Can you walk us through what we can expect to see happen today? Sure. Um, in a couple of hours' time, there's going to be a processional. As you said, she is. Uh, her body has been lying in rest uh, there at Holly Rook uh, House, which is the official residence of the monarch when they are there in Scotland. There's going to be a processional. Queen Anne, or sorry, uh, Princess Anne will be uh, accompanying the processional. Other members of the royal family, including the king, will join then for uh, for a religious service. And then her body will lie there at St. Giles Cathedral or, uh, Church while members of the public are able to come through and say goodbye. And it was, and it's especially fitting that there is this portion of her funeral arrangements, of her memorial services that are taking place in Scotland because Scotland was so special as a place to the Queen. 